Hey folks, looks into swirl here. Uh, we are going to do a pour today. It's a little different though because it's a pour not onto a canvas. Uh, we're going to pour onto a clear plastic sheet protector uh, in anticipation of uh, using it to make a tumbler, a stainless steel tumbler. Because this is clear plastic and I've taped it to a piece of uh, cardboard, a cardboard box, so that I could easily pick it up and tilt it, I decided for your extra viewing pleasure to include a beautiful picture. Uh, if my friend Sandy is watching, she will recognize this because she took this picture when she was on one of her many trips to Scotland, uh, where I'm sure she would like to be right now, but we're all kind of stuck at home these days, so we have pictures instead. And uh, I did that so that you could see exactly the outline of the eight and a half by 11 space that I will be pouring onto. We have a five ounce cup. We don't need very much paint. We're not looking to go over the sides. We're not looking for this to be very thick. We basically want to create a, what's called a skin. And that is, here's, here's just a piece of a skin. When um, the acrylic paint has spilled over the sides and is resting on my uh, Loli Beppe silicone mat, uh, and it dries, you can then peel it off and it, it's just, it's plastic. That's what acrylic paint is. It's liquid plastic and when it dries, it is solid flat plastic. And you can use it in various things and we are gonna make an eight and a half by 11 sheet of skin today for our tumbler project. What we are using so I don't have to mix things up a day in advance and let them sit, we are using some ready to pour paints. We have our deco art. Fluid Art, ready to pour acrylics. This is mint green. This is deep turquoise. This is bright yellow. This is bright violet. And lastly, we have fuchsia. And we barely need, I don't even think we need three ounces, maybe closer to two. And this is a five ounce cup, so we're only gonna go up to say the first or second line here, because we want it to be completely cover the eight and a half by 11 sheet protector, but at the same time, we don't want it thick. Here we go, I'm just gonna layer a cup and we're gonna pour. All right, I'm thinking that's probably enough. We'll find out. Let's move the bottles out of the way. I can always squeeze out a little more if I need some. Here we go. I'm gonna do a traveling ring pour just to get things moving around as much as I can. Which is basically, also it's also called a tornado pour because it produces sort of a funnel. Although I didn't start big to go small. Anyway, all right, let's let that sit for a minute, spread out a little bit. All right, and now we tilt, hopefully, covering everything. <laughs> like I said, I can always layer more in the cup and pour some more. All right, you know what? Let's just stop there. We got our corners covered, got our edges covered. 
It's interesting because, well, it's interesting. <laughs> I actually like the first pour a little better, but I'm not unhappy with how this turned out at all. It's gonna produce a fascinating skin to wrap around a tumbler. Uh, we will now put this aside and let it dry. And the next time you see me, we will have a dried skin and we will wrap it around a tumbler. Hey everybody, Luxinda Swirl here. We are back. I really apologize for the overhead camera not working last time for the, the beginning of this video. Uh, hopefully it's working now. It says it is. And we will have overhead and side views for this portion of the show. Okay, so our skin has dried, our pore has dried, and created a plastic skin on our sheet protector. So I need to get it off the box now and off the sheet protector so we can put it on our 20 ounce skinny tumbler. Uh, it's, as you can see, pretty much the exact perfect width to cover the tumbler. Um, I, I'm embarrassed to say that in my art room I do not have a ruler, a straight edge ruler. Uh, so we're just going to use this. Basically I'm going to cut it with an X-Acto knife and then peel it off very carefully. There we go. Okay, there's one side. Turn it around and do the other side. See if we can coax it off here. This includes the top of the cover. There's our picture of Scotland underneath. Now I need to separate it. There we go. So here's the protector and here is the skin of acrylic paint. That's all it is. It's just dried acrylic paint. Pretty cool, huh? You can see why they call it a skin. Okay. Cut it off here without... Doing too much damage. Where's my X-Acto knife? I hit it, didn't I? Yep. Yeah. Okay, and voila, our pour in a sheet. Now, even though the other side looks pretty cool, honestly, the fact that it has the yellow borders doesn't do a lot for me, so we'll stick with this side, I think. And here's the basic premise, in case you haven't already figured it out. We are going to Mod Podge our tumbler and wrap it. So the trick now is to figure out where we want to do the wrap. Well I think this part is super cool. Probably get full coverage if we start from this end and just use this portion of the pour. Let's see what happens when we start from this end. Yep, that pretty much goes all the way around. That will be a seriously cool looking mug, uh, tumbler cup. Okay. As I said, we need Mod Podge here. I'm just I'm actually start from this direction and do it a little bit at a time. This stuff is super stretchy, although I, I don't want to tear it at all. Uh, I do want to stretch it because I want it to be flat with no bubbles. It does make sense to start it here. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. We will trim the edges at the end so they don't have to be perfect to start. It may turn out that it would help if they were perfect to start, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think we can trim the edges. All right, this is my little container of Mod Podge that I got at the Dollar Tree. 
a while ago. I haven't used very much of it. We'll just start here. You obviously need complete coverage because you really want it to stick good and stay on there. Oops, my paper's coming up with me here. And there we have it. <laughs> I, I get that it still looks awful. Don't worry. Okay, so I need to trim this off the bottom. I'm trimming the excess off the bottom. All right. This is a really neat, uh, what do they call it, cup edging tool. I'll link to it below in the description. It makes it very easy to trim excess stuff, not, not the overlap. I'm trimming that off myself now, but you'll see in a sec what I use this for. Um, when you do fabric covered tumblers, it also comes in very handy for that as well. Same principle. You wrap a tumbler in fabric and then you trim off the excess so it looks really nice and snazzy. So, I have this set to a certain height. Um, that'll be the same height from the bottom and from the top. I could, I could do the bottom one height and then put some of the spacers that I took out back in and make the top uh, a bigger strip or a, a wider strip off. Uh, just be very careful. This is a single edge razor blade and as I was installing it just now, I managed to slice my pinky finger. So. Uh, use with caution, adult supervision, which is something I obviously clearly still need. But anyway, you push it against the razor blade and you trim all the way around and it just it gives you a straight edge. Okay, see? And then you can peel off a perfect strip and I'll just clean this up with a little alcohol or acetone. And then we're going to turn it over and do the same thing on the top. Let's start at the seam this time and be smart. <laughs> okay. Just pushing against the blade, holding it down on the surface to keep it all even, and turning the cup around. It's a great little device. Okay. Now we should be able to just. Peel that off. There, so now we have, once it's cleaned up it'll look prettier, but now we have very nice edges. We have a beautifully wrapped acrylic pour tumbler. I'll work a little harder while I've got a few seconds before this Mod Podge dries and get all the air bubbles out. 
or as many as I can. The epoxy will hide a multitude of sins. And then once I get the epoxy on, I will show you the, the epoxy product with glitter on the bottom and everything. Um, because the seam will not go away. Uh, this would be where I would probably choose to put a decal. You could put, I don't know, a flower on a stem. You could put a cursive vinyl of your name. Fit it in there. We cover most of the seam up. And then this is the design that will show on the rest of the tumbler. Isn't that pretty? Hey everybody, we're back. It's the day after and I have my finished tumbler. And I think we need to talk about some of the things I did wrong. <laughs> so here we go. Let's do a debriefing on this uh, acrylic pour skin wrapped around the tumbler. Um, so, the most obvious thing I did wrong, sorry about the birds making noise, it's spring and they're happy. Uh, I put way too much glitter in my top coat of resin. I was thinking I would add just a little bit of the glitter that I used for the top and bottom rims where I uh, cut the skin off. Um, and I, I wanted to add a little bit to add some sparkle and to maybe cover up the um, seam line on the back which you can't even see now because I added so much damn glitter. Darn, darn glitter. I added so much glitter. You also can't see the decal I added very well. It does say Cindy under there. It even has a little heart on top of the eye, dotting the eye. I mean, it's really pretty, but you'd never know it. <laughs> so lesson number one, if you put glitter in the uh, final layer, just use a very small amount. I was clearly wrong about the amount I used. And the other thing is probably use an extra fine glitter. This is just a fine glitter and I think it's too big. I think an extra fine silver holographic would have been much better in a tiny amount. Okay, debrief point number two. Um, on the straight, or on the, um, the seam line, let's see if I can where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, so on the seam line, which you now can't see, uh, you saw me do the cut with the X-Acto knife freehand. I should not have done that because then the edges did not meet up perfectly. There was a little bit of overlap and one side stuck up too far. It would have been obvious uh, if I hadn't used too much glitter. <laughs> so in that respect, the glitter worked. It covered up all that uh, mistake that I made. However, uh, it would have been better if I'd used a straight edge and then made sure the seam edges matched perfectly and laid flat. That's what I should have done instead of having a little bit of overlap because I, I did the cut freehand. That was a mistake. Um, yeah, okay, so start with enough paint to do the pour in one pour, not two pours like I did. Uh, I, I don't dislike yellow. I think it's lovely, except I ended up with way too much of it here. Uh, I was a lot happier with the first pour colors, but I didn't use enough paint, so I had to add more, and, and we ended up with this. So I'd say next time I will definitely use more paint. I would say a minimum of three to four ounces instead of the two that I used in the first pour of this. That wasn't enough. And, um, oh yeah. Be careful when using a razor blade. <laughs> I cut fingers on both my hands yesterday because I clearly still do not understand how razor blades work. And I slipped and I, I cut myself. So just be careful. In general, be careful. Be careful with resin, use your PPE. Be careful with razor blades. Overall, I do like how this turned out. I will happily use it for myself. I love the method. I will definitely be doing more skin pours, or let's see, acrylic pour skin tumbler wraps. That's what we'll call it. I'll definitely be doing more of those. And uh, I won't cover them up so badly next time with glitter. Thanks everyone for sticking with me through this video. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you in the next video.